Okay, hey everybody. Hope you are doing well. Um, this is going to be the first of a couple of uh, DBQ videos I'm going to make where I'm going to sort of go over the DBQ that, that you had, um, talk about, you know, context, thesis, some stuff that I came up with, uh, and then we'll, you know, you can just use that to kind of self-grade um, a little bit. Uh, so let's just jump right in. This is going to be the one for the Eisenhower DBQ, okay? Um, so the prompt, right, was uh, to what extent were the Cold War fears of the American people successfully addressed by the administration um, of Dwight D. Eisenhower in the years 1940-1961? So what I want to do is always look at the historical thinking skill, and it's a little hard on this one. It's kind of cause and effect. A lot of these prompts that you guys are getting right now um, are from document sets that were before 2015, which is when they did sort of a, a revamping of, of what the, the prompts are actually supposed to uh, fall into that, you know, causation, comparison, CCOT framework. So some of them are a little bit different. I, tr I tried to, to, to reframe them to make them more like what you are um, actually going to be getting. But ultimately, the same skills are really going to apply here. So you're, you're looking here um, at what were the fears, and uh, then did Eisenhower do a good job of addressing them? Now, you can structure you can structure this a couple of ways, but the prompt kind of does it for you. Um, basically, fears and responses. So, one way you could do it would be if you had if you're trying to come up with your groups, um, you address the fears uh, as like its own group, and then you have responses as as another group. Um, I think it gets a little messy that way. I think the better way, the way I kind of did, is um, I look at a fear and a response together in um, in a group. So you'll that'll make sense as I go along. So let me just start talking about context real quick. Um, so just context, as you recall, is always you know previously on on the last episode, uh, and a few things that came to mind for me um, is the end of World War II. So uh, America is now a superpower, right? So America is playing a bigger role in the world. America has um, more global interest and a more active foreign policy. Uh, the depression is over. So America has now entered a time of prosperity, but the depression was not long ago. And also, um, probably most importantly, is we are no longer friends with the Soviet Union. So we had sort of an uneasy alliance during the Cold War. But, uh, I mean, sorry, during World War II, but that basically ended the moment the, um, uh, the treaty was signed. So, uh, jumping into um, our groupings, okay? Um, the first, well, so I'll read you my thesis, and then I'll go through the groups. So my thesis statement is, Americans had many fears from 1948 to 1961 as a result of the Cold War. Fears which were only moderately addressed by President Eisenhower's administration, despite many good faith efforts. Americans feared the communist Soviet Union, nuclear war, and economic depression, all of which proved too existential for the administration to adequately soothe. So my groupings are essentially fear. No, group number one is there is the fear, communism and the Soviets. Uh, group number two is nuclear war. And then group number three is that Americans feared economic depression. So uh, in each one of those groups, I'm going to expl I'm going to use document evidence to show what the fear was, how I know that, and then how, um, uh, you can probably hear my son there in the background, um, and then how Eisenhower did in responding. So my first, my first group here, uh, Americans feared communism and the Soviets. And so I start with um, document one, Americans feared the Kremlin and are even turning against each other, right? This is a document from Eisenhower. Basically, just laying it out. This is actually a really helpful document for this particular um, uh, DBQ because, like, you have to know what the fears are. And he's like, hey, they're afraid of this, this, and this. He says they're afraid of Soviets, the Red Scare, right? That's what he's referring to, by the way, some historical context. Um, what unwise investigators will do to us here at home as they try to combat subversion or bribery or deceit within. He says that they uh, fear the Kremlin, right? And the Kremlin, saying the Kremlin is like saying the White House, right? Sometimes it's used sort of as a stand-in for referring to America or to the Capitol, for example. Um, anyway, so uh, the Kremlin, um, he says they're afraid of them. Um, now, I use point of view here, I think is a good opportunity because uh, he's a recently elected president, right? This is um, 1954, so he's been elected, uh, you know, just two, two years previous. Um, and on the campaign trail, he's probably giving a really good 
idea of what Americans want, what they're afraid of, hopes and dreams, things like that. So I, you know, I said that you know Eisenhower would uh, potentially be a, a very credible source here from his point of view. Um, now, uh, document five. Then um, I also point out is that Americans uh, they fear the Soviets' um, ability and possible willingness to destroy America. So. In document five, right, that's this idea of massive retaliation are really screwed because um, one person pushes a button, the, um, you know, there's no time, there's no time to react, essentially. So what I'm using document five here is I'm saying we are afraid of the Soviets and their potential willingness to use nuclear weapons. Um, but it's our fear of the Soviet Union that that connects to. Um, document Two then is where I start to address uh, Eisenhower's responses. So I said in document two, which is this is John Foster Dulles, um, and he's basically uh, in this document he's saying um, he's he's referring to a couple of things. One is a historical context for this is the domino effect, uh, the domino effect, which is that if any uh, um, domino effect is that if a one country falls, then they all fall, right? You think about a row of dominoes, so we have to keep that. So that kind of that ties into containment, right? Keeping communism where it is, not letting it spread. I also um, think that uh, this relates to the Monroe Doctrine a little bit as well. Um, and the reason for that is uh, he's saying we're going to have an aggressive foreign policy in the Western Hemisphere. And so um, that's sort of a continuation of this idea that the Western Hemisphere uh, is our backyard and that America runs the Western Hemisphere. So that's one response, is we're going to take an aggressive foreign policy. Americans are afraid of communism, they're afraid of the Soviet Union, we'll take an aggressive foreign policy. Document um, uh, 3 um, also is going to uh, tie into this, and that Eisenhower's response is to make sure Americans could rapidly uh, escape. It would make America basically immune from invasion. If you think about like some, you know, think about how many ways you can escape Chicago, right? How many interstates there are. Now, I mean, Chicago sucks with gridlock and all that, but in general, right? You can get out of Chicago a thousand different ways. You can use the major interstate art um, arteries like the Eisenhower Expressway, huh? uh, the Kennedy Expressway, okay? Um, the Stevenson uh, Expressway, named after me. Um, you can do it, you know, on these expressways, you can um, also do it on a number of smaller roads. But the point I'm making is um, this massive infrastructure project um, was such that it made America very hard to sort of like break apart or isolate. Um, also, fun fact, um, on any federal interstate, any federal highway, one mile out of every five must be completely straight. That way a plane can land there if necessary. So there you go. Um, anyway, so there's another one of Eisenhower's response, right? He's taking aggressive foreign policy abroad, and he's also helping to secure uh, America at home. However, um, if you look at uh, document six, our, Ameri our colonist, right, um, is, is the Eisenhower response effective? And he's basically saying, um, maybe you're being too aggressive. You're spending too much on missile programs. You're spending too much on defense. Nothing else is going to be spent on. And so um, there's some fears that uh, maybe maybe he's doing a good job um, with uh, finding the Soviet Union, but the fear is that other stuff is going to to suffer. So I say he does um, in this one a decent job of addressing those fears, although creating other ones in some ways. So my next group, right, um, is that Americans fear nuclear war? Okay, um, and I'm using documents five, three, and seven. So document five, right, we talked about massive retaliation and this fear, this sort of existential threat um, that a nuclear war uh, presented. Now, Eisenhower response, we, we used document three already, um, but we used it again, is this national highway defense system that Americans will be able to evacuate in the instance that a nuclear weapon is used. Okay, so how effective was this? Well, I would look at document seven. Americans are saying, um, I'm going to build my own bomb shelter. So to me, that seems to actually go back to document five, which is that, you know, maybe if we had a longer response time, the highways would be a really helpful defense measure. However, they're not so effective if we only have 13 minutes and everyone's trying to hop on the Kennedy. 
So Americans start building their own bomb shelters. Um, and so I'd say maybe his um, effect of, of his policy to try and uh, assuage the fears of Americans was not super effective in that way. And then the third one I have, and I use document one again, is um, economic depression, right? There is, he says in document one, that they do fear economic depression. That makes sense. Most people alive in this time had experienced it. They remembered it. They knew how bad the times were. Um, and so um, one thing Eisenhower does is he focuses a lot on, on domestic issues. Um, building so uh, infrastructure, right? It's always infrastructure week, and uh, in the same way that the president, just two days ago, President Trump floated this idea of a big infrastructure bill to help provide jobs. Um, Eisenhower did that. Think how many people building highways were getting paid uh, and were able to spend that money in the economy. Um, so it was sort of the historical context, I would say, would be the spending, the defense spending that began during World War II and continued following, um, following with this e eternal Cold War military buildup. Um, another response to economic depression was education, right? Educated Americans are going to be Americans that can get jobs. Now, this kind of goes, again, with the fear of the Soviets. And historical context, I would say, for this um, is Sputnik. Right, uh, the Soviets had just launched the first satellite into space, and Americans were freaking out. They're like, "Oh my God, we're so behind! The Soviets are so much far; they're ahead of us." Um, and so, the purpose of Document Four, you could also say, may have been to to comfort Americans a little bit. Like, "Hey, I got a plan! Right, we're going to do more math, more science, more technology." Um, and uh, then um, I tie this back to Document Six, though, is that again, her box like, "You're not doing enough." Whatever you're doing, it's all being, the budget is only so big, and if defense is eating up the biggest chunk of that budget, then you're not being very effective. So if I was to really evaluate, I'd say Eisenhower had some good ideas, but the threat of nuclear war and communism was just so existential that Americans, there wasn't really anything that was going to make them feel um, any better so long as there was a nuclear buildup. Um, taking Baby Evan says hello and says that he loves DBQs and that you should too. So um, hope you guys are all staying safe and everyone is uh, doing okay, keeping up with the work. Uh, please fill out the survey and I will do another one of these um, very shortly for uh, I guess what would have been the Civil Rights DBQ and I'll, I'll be doing one for all of them. So um, all right, see you guys later.